Hot choke, we're gonna start super basic and then start layering and changing details to it to make it a little bit more effective, okay? So, from the warm up, we found the dangers of sticking this arm in deep, right? Not that you'll never do it, but if it's too deep, yeah, go ahead and hit the, hit the roll through. Yeah, exactly. I, all of a sudden, I'm on the bottom side, right? So, for our purposes today, we're gonna keep that arm very shallow. So again, I'm on the right side of Dave's body. My left knee is inside of his, uh, in between his, go ahead, go back to where you were. It's in between his elbow and his knee. Okay, I penetrated that gap. This arm, I'm gonna resist the temptation to bury it deep and just be shallow here. That way, if he decides to go for that roll through, I can just kind of play hopscotch with it here. Okay, now, my goal is for my right hand to get to his far collar here. Now, obviously, he's gonna be fighting, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do a, a, a pass by. I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna open up his collar, feed it to my left hand. That's gonna hold it tight, okay? Now my right hand is gonna enter and get a deep grip on that collar without even trying. If I just grab, let's say his knee's loose here, and I just grab as high as I can on the collar here, look how much slack there is still left, right? But if I prep it by pushing my right hand to the left, right? I don't want to reach. I don't want to reach in deep and open up with that collar because again, now my arm's deep. Now I'm going to get rolled, right? So I use my right hand to feed it to my left hand, which is going to hold it here. And now my right. I don't want to say enter again, but maybe it's still there. Now when I get a high grip on the collar, now it's a true high grip here. Okay. My left hand. I'm going to give you a couple different options. You can hold the elbow. You can hold the wrist and. After I show you the first finish, I'm gonna show you another sneaky way to finish this. But for now, hold the elbow, hold the wrist so he can't move his hand, okay? From here, I begin to walk around my opponent's body towards his head as I flex my right wrist, like I'm fishing here, okay? So I got a deep grip on the collar, I've isolated his left arm, again, not too deep. I said from here, he probably it's probably gonna be hard for him to roll me. Not impossible though, so be careful. From here, I begin to walk around towards his head, as I activate that choke for the finish here, okay? You can also, so again, I'm here, right hand feeds it to the left, which is gonna hold it taut. Now my right hand gets as high on the collar as possible. I can also hold the outside of his elbow, which will accomplish the same thing. You're in less danger of being rolled. Or as I walk, I'm going to take my left armpit, settle it on top of his head here, and continue with the choke. That's the most powerful version. It's also the riskiest because if I miss and I slip off, I don't have much, okay? So let's go over that again. I'll let you finish with whatever grip you want. Is in between his right armpit and his right knee. My left arm is shallow, okay? From here, my right arm is gonna come through, feed the collar to my left hand. Left hand holds it taut, and now I get a true high grip on my opponent's collar. Left hand can, can be holding the wrist or outside of the elbow, whatever you want. I walk, look at the direction of my hips. I walk towards his head as I flex my wrist here for the finish. Any questions? Go, cool. all right, on three, one, two, three. Uh, Dave, you need to see it, right? Version of the clock choke, okay? Let's go over a couple of weaknesses and our potential weaknesses to the, the version we just did and then kind of address them. So the first, potential weakness we kind of all we almost already addressed which I don't want to stick this arm in deep because I might get re-rolled right so I've solved that problem by taking my attacking hand again don't go under a lot of you guys were going under the armpit here no over the neck I'm gonna push it to my supporting hand supporting hand takes over I achieve the same goal of keeping that uh, gi taut that way when my right hand goes high it's truly high and not high relative so that there's a lot of slacking okay here now it's truly high okay from here, problem number one, if I'm controlling this arm and I start to sit my hips out this way to walk, if Dave's strong and he sits up, I end up on my butt here and I lose the position. Okay? So instead of sitting out, let's keep our, uh, our, the knot on our belt pointed towards the floor in like a sprawling position and just kind of sidewalk from the sprawl there. Okay? So again, did, gonna do everything the same, one, two, Three, instead of sitting out, I'm gonna sprawl this way and walk, okay? So now, let's add one more detail with the left hand. Instead of grabbing the elbow, or this is also risky, it's nice because I can control his far arm, but he can still hit me with the roll because I'm kind of entangled here, right? So from here, instead of doing all that, what I'm just gonna do is, I'm just gonna grab his opposite collar. I'm gonna pull it taut as well. 
adding even more pressure onto the essentially what is now a noose around his neck. So I'm, again, um, as I walk, I'm activating my right hand here like this, and I'm also pulling with the left hand here. Okay, from the beginning, triple pass one, two, three. Left hand grabs the far collar. They're both tight now. Now instead of sitting out. I'm going to sprawl, make sure my head is low on his shoulder line, and then start to walk here. Okay, again, we solved the problem of the re-roll by using my right or my attacking hand to feed the supporting hand, and then my attacking hand goes high. Instead of grabbing the, uh, the wrist or the elbow, or maybe going over like I did before, I'm going to grab his collar. Again, now I can be nice and shallow with my arm and pull it tight. I'm not gonna sit out because I might, he might stand up and I might end up on my butt. So I'm gonna sprawl, again, staying over his shoulder line here. And now my goal is to walk until my hip is pushing his head down. Chances are he'll tap before that, but that's my end goal, okay? From here, as I walk, I'm making sure I'm over his shoulder line and my body is forcing his head down, okay? Any questions? Cool, let's add these details to this clock choke to make it a little bit safer. On three, one, two, three. Welcome back guys, going over the clock choke this week. Uh, here we have Denise on top and Dave on the bottom. No resistance, they're just going through the technique. Yep, Dave uh, attempted the, AKA the fat man roll here. I think Denise has her elbow just shallow enough going this way where it won't be too bad of a threat. I'd like to see her put her forehead on the ground. I'm not sure if Dave tapped to that or not. Tries it again. It's a clean tap that time. Nice. Again, I'd like to see her elbow a little bit shallower, just in case Dave decides to roll her. Okay, now we got a problem. She didn't do the triple feed. She went directly from her supporting hand pulling the collar and then her attacking hand grabbing high on the collar. If Dave were so inclined, look how far deep her elbow is inside of Dave's structure. If Dave wanted to, he would take his left elbow wrap it and hit the fat man roll going this way. So please be careful about how deep your supporting arm is in. Use that triple feed. Again, there's no need for your secondary arm to be high on the collar like it is right here. There's no need for your arm to be that high. Your first hand, let me get rid of that. Your first hand should pull the collar down. Your second hand can be way down here pulling the collar tight. It doesn't matter. And again, that, that will allow your elbow to remain outside of your opponent's structure. And then the attacking hand can make the final adjustment high on the collar. Yep, just managed to turn the angle in time. Again, that's another reason why we put our forehead on the ground and also why we start to, to sprawl and walk uh, north-south. Her elbow's in a slightly better position now. Good. That's good, forehead on the ground, start walking. That's very good. Got Kirk on top and Nate on the bottom here. Kirk looking for that attacking grip without putting his right arm in too far. Nate doing a good job hand fighting. Yeah, normally if we couldn't get a grip from here, we'd start taking the back, start exposing our opponent. Oh, Kirk decides to switch sides. Uh, looks like he's got a collar, but again, he's under his opponent's uh, armpit. It's going to be hard to choke his opponent from here. There we go. Now he's going over the neck. I told him just to stay in this position and just to attack the collar. So they weren't allowed to like turn their opponent over and side control or take their back or anything like that. Uh, not there we go. I think Kirk got confused as to which arm needed to go where. Still looking for that collar. Nate's still doing a good job hand fighting. Might have it up, oh, and he gets it. Got Dave on top and Zach on the bottom here. With the triple feed. Oh, let's look at that again. Here. Boom. Look at Zach's arm. He, even though he doesn't have Dave's elbow with the gi, or even without the gi, he, Dave's arm was in too deep, so all Zach has to do is make sure Dave's arm stays tight around his waist, drops that hip, turns over. Almost too far that time, but he still managed to come up into side control. Let's see if he makes an adjustment. 
here. So he's got a triple if he's attacking the wrong color. There we go. One, two, three. I would get, it. yep, okay, goes for the traditional grip here and finishes it, nice. That's another uh, trade-off about grabbing your opponent's wrist. You grab their wrist, they can't, or it's hard for them to do the fat man roll. Yeah, like that. Pros and cons for each grip. He's going to hang it now. Also, Zach's obviously not resisting too much. Got to hit the triple feed. Zach looks like he's going for the uh, fat man roll again. Good. Dave denies it. That would have been a perfect time to hit the rolling bow and arrow choke. Um, we didn't go over it this week, but just know that eventually we will go over it, and that would have been a great time right about here to hit the rolling bow and arrow choke because we still have a deep grip on uh, attacking grip on their collar here, but we've lost control of their arm or their or the opposite lapel here. Got Kirk on top and Zach on the bottom here. From the back angle. Looks like he's going to hit with a fat man roll. Yep, called it. Let's look at that again. Here. So Kirk's arm isn't in that far, but with the gi, or again, or without the gi, even, the minimal, even a minimal amount of exposure, if your arm is tight to their body and you can't extract it on time, you will get caught with the roll. You'll be able to extract your arm at any time. That supporting hand is going to go low on their collar. It looks like he's trying to take the back. I mean, he successfully took the back. I'm not sure if it ended with a tap or not. But I'd like to see Kirk sprawling too. Got a decent grip on the collar, but gets rolled. Let's look at that again. Here, boom. You could see how tight Zach is winding that arm to his belly here. He's going to ditch and roll. I like the way Zach uh, moved his knee to the left as well. Go one more time. Okay, that's a good grip. Again, from here, if you wanted to hit the rolling bow and arrow choke, he could. He didn't go over that this week. But now, look, now Kirk is sprawling his weight back. Because he knows that Zach wants to roll him this way. He's been bitten twice. Now he's got to put his forehead on the ground. <laughs> kind of. Not bad. And I feel like he would have been able to finish from the back from there. Got Zach on top and Nate on the bottom here. Zach looking for the collar. Nate doing a good job defending. Oh, looks like he's got one attacking grip. I can't see where Nate's right hand is. Okay, looks like he's got it. I'd like to see him sprawl and walk. There we go. And he gets the finish. Yeah. Don't try and crank your opponent here or, or lift him. It's the opposite. You want to kind of sprawl and walk. Hunting for that collar. Looks like he's got a grip with his right arm. That's it. He's pushing a little bit too much. I'd like to see Zach sprawl. I think I, think I tell him as much. This is not one of those um, chokes where you're going to be like straightening your arm out. Like, like I forget what it's called, but like a karate chop behind the, your op opponent's neck with the opposite arm. No, you're going to be squeezing, walking, and sprawling. Doesn't have the grip quite in yet. Looks like he's hunting for it. And that's time. Got Nate on top and Kirk on the bottom here. Doing the hand fight. Kirk's like he's going for a fat man roll. Oh, wow. Gets it. I didn't think he was going to get that. You're going to be able to extract that arm out at any moment. <laughs> Nate trying to distract him. Oh, it gets a good grip on that collar. Left arm's not in too deep. Kirk tries to roll. Doesn't get it. Let's see if Nate can sprawl, walk, and get his forehead on the ground. Oh, no. Kirk actually managed to get... Oh... Might be able to go for a bow and arrow choke from here from the back. Very nice. Good roll by Kirk, but also good counter by Nate. He held on to that uh, grip, and he managed to make a positive angle with his body. Oh, that was great. Look at that again. That was nothing fancy about that. Kirk just rolled out of that position. I mean, he's inside control technically, but 
is not is no longer in danger of being choked which is the point of this drill hand fighting hand fighting switches sides Kirk with the roll almost manages to get back into the guard though so again that was a that was a net positive as far as I'm concerned he rolls doesn't get it but manages to maneuver Nate into his guard got Dave on top and Nate on the bottom here Dave look at he's going for the triple feet oh maybe not his left arm might be in too far Nate looks like he's trying to come out the back door He's having a hard time getting to that collar. <laughs> I don't quite know what he's trying to do by shaking Nate here. Can't quite see the hands. Nate's pretty much out at this point. Look at where his right arm is. It's on the outside of, uh, of uh, Dave's body. Can't quite see if Dave has a grip on a collar. Oh, he does. Okay. Nate on top, Dave on the bottom. Still running the same drill. Lots of resistance now, though. Nate looking for an in for his attacking hand. I probably should have filmed from the other angle as well. Dave finds the opportunity to do a fat man roll. Doesn't quite get it. He might be out of danger of the choke. Depending on where, where, where Nate's arms are. Good counter by Nate. Look at that again. Goes for the fat. Well, let me rewind it. But here, goes for the fat man roll. He will. Okay. He will, look how look how perpendicular Nate's body is to Dave's body. It can be very hard to roll your opponent there. So Nate essentially posts with his head, and then manages to use that to handstand to flip over to the other side. Again, out of the danger of the choke, but still not in a great position. But I, like I said, out of the danger of the choke. So I guess that's priority number one. Kirk on top, Zach on the bottom here. Kirk being very shallow with that far arm. He doesn't want to get rolled. Oh, it gets a good grip. Okay. Zach got a decent bite on his hand, and look what Kirk did. Kirk moved back. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. However, if Zach is uh hip to it, he's gonna actually look look at look at Kirk's base right now. It's got nothing preventing him from falling backwards. If I were Zach, I would drive straight into him. Let's see what happens. Doesn't quite get there. Oh, Kirk gets the back with a bow and arrow choke. Or at least a grip on the collar, I mean. See if Zach can hit the escape. Oh, there we go. Starts to create incongruency. And manages to get out of the situation. He ends up mounted, maybe? Oh, no. That's a good position to end up in. Nice. Kirk on top, Dave on the bottom. I believe they're going 100% resistance right now. This might have been in the middle of sparring, actually. And Kirk's got the back with no hooks. Still looking for that collar. See how Dave reacts. Oh, manages to turn him over. Going for the armbar. That was another thing that these guys discovered on their own. They're like, oh, if I'm in a position to do a, a bow and arrow choke, the armbar might be there as well. He didn't get it this time, but I do appreciate him trying it. Zach on top, Josh on the bottom. Looks like they're just working this drill. Zach, oh, Josh, oh, Josh, <laughs> Josh went for a fat man roll, rolled a little bit too far. Let's see what happened there. So here, he decides to go for the fat man roll. All right, he got, he gets the arm. Boom. Okay, so he rolls over Zach because Zach was already starting to go uh, parallel to finish the choke. He gets here again. Uh, bad camera work on on uh, my end. I'm assuming that Zach manages to sit him back up. Yep, there we go, and take his back. That's what that's a pretty fun scramble. Okay, I like what Zach's doing here. Look, his attacking hand is far in because his bottom, his support hand is super low. Again, it's all the same collar, right? It, there's no disconnected joints on that collar. So if you pull down here, it'll make it tight up here. Now he reaches for the far collar to get the finish. Got to get his forehead on the ground. Zach attempts the roll again. Doesn't get it. Has to tap.
Oh, Josh. Oh, nice roll by Josh. That was very good. Look at what happened there. So again, this is the this is why you have to get your head on the ground when you're um when you're attacking the cross collar for the final touches of the of the choke. Because as you walk parallel, it's gonna be easier for your opponent to roll you, especially if your arms in deep, right? So get your forehead on the ground as soon as possible. You wanna be perpendicular to your opponent until you're ready to walk parallel. I forget what we were talking about here. Oh, round's over. <laughs> That's about it. Let's look at that roll again. Here. Starts. It's another roll. Okay. Uh, I don't think Zach did anything wrong on that part other than he was a little bit too parallel when he should have activated the choke. Again, it's easiest to roll your opponent when you're parallel, whether they're sitting next to you or on top of you. In this case, both our arms are occupied because we're going for the choke. Got Josh on top this time. Zach defending. Josh is doing a very smart job. Well, there we go. Good. Yeah, look how shallow that supporting hand is. That's, that's exactly what you want. Got to get his forehead on the ground and start walking parallel. There we go. Uh, again, he got his head on the ground, but he pitched over a little bit too much. So he gets his head on the ground, but look how high in the air his butt is. I'd like to see him still sprawling his legs back that way, right? Get as flat as you can. Get as perpendicular to your opponent as you can, or else you get rolled over your own head that way. The mechanics were there, just needed a couple of finishing touches. Attacking hand's got to go first. There we go. Now you feed it to supporting hand. Now attacking hand gets the high attack grip Good. here. Okay, okay, I see a problem. He's I told him to get his forehead on the ground. He's concentrating so much on getting his forehead to the ground that look how high off his feet he are. He, are, he is. He should be sprawling and getting his forehead to the ground. He should be forcing his opponent's head to the ground. He's going to get rolled from here. Yeah, ineffective. Sprawl. Please, sprawl. Hey, he's, still, <laughs> he's still pitching over. I think I tell him as much. He should be trying to get his, uh, his opponent's head on the ground. Yep, unfortunately loses. Again, you want to get your opponent's head on the ground, so please sprawl. Don't pitch over your opponent. Got Nate on top and Josh on the bottom here. Nate going for the fat man roll, doesn't get it. Seated right back into the turtle position. Oh, that was Josh going for the fat man roll, I forget who said <laughs> I think I got the names mixed up. I thought Nate had that for a second. Let me go back and look at that. So from here, he sprawls correctly, gets his head on the ground. I feel like, uh, I mean, clearly he did. Oh, okay, there we go. He walked back parallel and now he got put on his back. Okay, that's why. Might have still had it. Again, if you're on your back, it's can you finish it? Yeah, you can, but there's there's it's hard to generate leverage from there. dives in Josh doing a great job rolling he's got to prevent that by sprawling and get his uh, getting his forehead to the ground let's see if he makes the adjustment here oh he captured that arm uh, Josh still manages to get to the side and roll him over though some adjustments to be made namely sprawling getting your forehead to the ground when your opponent tries to roll you you're trying to stay perpendicular and then go for the choke bob on top and zach on the bob uh, on the bob on the bottom got the triple feed good looks like he's got his hands in position way too far over he's getting rolled yeah noticing that uh, from a lot of my guys they're they're um concentrating on getting their forehead to the ground but not sprawling remember both have to happen if you're only concentrating on getting your forehead to the ground your butt's high in the air you'll be essentially easier to roll it's triple feed one two I, I also think bob's hand is in a little bit too deep right now there we go see that that's what i mean by being perpendicular it stops your opponent's roll and now you can walk parallel for the choke there we go
and you, your face might hit the mat, but and you want to look pretty, you want to win. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to see Bob's secondary hand way lower on the collar here. He's essentially giving him a fat man roll here. Obviously, Zach's letting him start with that grip. Same thing. He's got to, oh, he's got to sprawl forward. He's going to get sat back. Yeah, he's got to sprawl forward. I shouldn't say sprawl forward. He's got to walk forward a little bit more or else you're in danger. So here. Okay. Yeah. See how Zach's lifting his chest up, right? No good. Bob's head should be forward. Everything should be forward orientated towards the floor. He's got to walk his legs this way. Yeah. From here, if Zach were to suddenly sit back, Bob's butt would touch the ground and he'd very soon be on his back. So please. Have yourself oriented forward, even if you're going for the traditional version. Got Nate on top and Zach on the bottom. Going for that triple feed. Zach doing a good job hand fighting. It's the grip. It's good. The grip's got to be way deeper. Here with it. That's a good grip. Here. Zach goes to the roll again. Nate keeps getting rolled. I can't figure out why. Look at that again. Here. Oh, his hips are a little bit too high on Zach's hips. So again, Nate's got to concentrate on getting his forehead to the ground, but he should also be sprawling this way. Or else, yeah, your center of gravity is too high. That's when you get rolled. Got that there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Look, now he's sprawled. That was beautiful. Let's look at that again. Here, gets the grip. Forehead to the ground, weight is low. Zach has no chance to sprawl, e or not sprawl, roll. Even if he were to roll now, Nate's forehead would hit the ground and act like a post. And now he starts walking for the finish. That was great. Good adjustment by Nate. I should also note that Zach wasn't fighting the hands as much on that last one as he is now. So let's see if Zach makes some adjustments. Yes, he does. <laughs> Nate stuck that arm in a little bit too far. Still doing it again. Yep. Guys, have that hand shallow, I'm telling you. Zach on top, Nate on the bottom. Zach going for that triple feed. Look how shallow his arm is here. If he feels Nate coming back for that arm or his hand, he could quickly pull that arm out. Gets that high grip on the collar. Got to put his forward on. There we go. That's a good finishing mechanic. You saw Nate start to feel the pressure as soon as his head started going to the floor and Zach started walking. That's exactly what we're looking for. That was a pretty good escape by Nate. Uh, Zach kind of let go with the control on his left arm. Let's see if he could still finish this. Or I think Zach, Zach comes to us from Vitor Shaolin school, so I think he knows the rolling bow and arrow if he gets that leg over. I think he might still be able to finish it from here. There we go. It's a triple feed. Good with the shallow collar. Yes, exactly. Preventing Nate from rolling him. The hand is shallow. Now he's got to sprawl his legs out. Okay, that time he needed the control. He lost it, and we saw Nate manage to roll out of it to his right, away from the choke. Reset for the last one. Triple feed. Opposite collar. Good. Yep, he's keeping his hand nice and shallow. So he takes his hand completely out. But look, every time he, Nate's wise to it now, every time he takes his hand all the way out because he doesn't want to get rolled, Nate is unable to roll him, but he literally unwinds the choke here. So avoid the temptation of taking the arm all the way out unless you're going to do the rolling bow and arrow. And then you only take it out, what am I trying to say, right before you roll so you could grab their leg.